Hi everybody, Dr. Sunil Dand, internal medicine physician. We're seeing more and more stories about vaccinated people getting COVID-19. And these stories are coming out of some of the most vaccinated countries in the world, including Israel and the United Kingdom. And I predict we will see more and more of these stories about breakthrough cases in the United States over the next few weeks and months. What do they mean and what should we make of them? Well, the first thing to say is that if you're vaccinated against COVID-19, don't panic. The hope is that if you do get COVID-19, it will be a much less severe case as a result of the vaccine. But it was never realistic to expect from the beginning of the vaccine rollout that there would be no cases of COVID-19 in vaccinated individuals. And I said this from the very beginning and people looked at me like I had three heads because I think there was an unrealistic expectation out there that the vaccine would mean zero COVID cases. But that was never the case. And I will speak about why this is happening in a moment. Over the last few days, we actually saw that the UK health minister, his name is Sajid Javid, I've actually been following him for a few years as a member of parliament. Then he was the finance minister, the chancellor, and now he's back as the health secretary. He is double jabbed and he was diagnosed with COVID-19. So far, it appears to be a mild case. He's actually a good guy. I wish him a speedy recovery. But he is a prime example over the last few days of how this has happened. Now, remember, with regards to the vaccine program rollout, from the very beginning, we wanted to prioritize the highest risk group groups first, those who were most at risk of a severe case of COVID-19. And we had to, as a priority, try to keep these people out of hospital. And the data over the next few weeks and months will hopefully show us that this is the case. But of course, in science, we wait till the data comes in before making a judgment. Now, personally, I want the vaccine to be 100% effective and there to be zero side effects. But of course, as a doctor and somebody who tries to think scientifically, and this should be the case for anyone in medicine or science, we don't go primarily with our emotions. We look at things objectively. We always tell the truth to our patients and we look at real life data. And actually coming back to this issue of trying to look at things objectively and rationally, I've had lots of correspondence over the last few weeks when I make some points, raise some questions or concerns. People sometimes say, Dr. Dan, you're anti-vax. And again, this gets to a point which I've raised in my previous videos about this absolutism, this binary thinking. And people who think like this in medicine or science are a tremendous stain on our great profession. You asked a question, get over to the other side of the playground. That's not allowed. You're either in this tribe or that tribe. This sort of thinking, this absolutism is so detrimental to the practice of good medicine and getting to our goals in society. I'm not even going to answer the question about being anti-vax, except to say that I've told thousands of people, both in my videos and in real life, that they should absolutely get vaccinated. My inbox is full, especially those at high risk who I've encouraged to get vaccinated. And even in my clinic, this is going back even before COVID, I'm a doctor who frequently administers vaccines to my patients if there's no nurse available. But yes, I guess if I ask any questions at all, that makes me anti-vax, according to some people. That's the sorry state that we are in. The two main areas, though, that I do differ from certain mainstream thinking, which I've made abundantly clear in my previous videos, are number one, if somebody's previously had COVID and is currently demonstrating high levels of antibodies on blood tests, I do believe that that likely means that they have a good degree of immunity and don't need to be prioritized for a vaccine. And that is also backed up with studies. And secondly, children under 18s, do they need to be prioritized for vaccination right now? When we know, according to all of the data, they are a low risk group. Most countries in the world, including the United Kingdom, are not yet vaccinating children for this reason, because they are a low risk group. And I stand firm in my ultimate belief that this is a global problem and we should be prioritizing vaccinations worldwide to those in vulnerable groups. There are hundreds of millions of people all over the world who may have to wait years for a COVID-19 vaccine who are in those vulnerable groups. And I don't think that is a fair or good place to be. And I don't think history will judge us well for that. So let me get back then to the main issue here. Why are people who have been vaccinated getting COVID-19? I can think of three reasons why. 
Number one, the fact that we are dealing with a rapidly mutating virus. This is one of the biggest reasons I can think of. Now, we keep hearing stories about the new variants and COVID-19, like a lot of respiratory viruses, like influenza even, is showing the ability to mutate quite rapidly. And trust me, if it wasn't the Delta variant, it would be the Red variant or the Green variant or the Scotland variant or the Canada variant. But these variants will keep coming along and we will always be trying to play catch up with a vaccine. And by the time we roll out a vaccine, there may well be another new variant. That's the reality of what we're dealing with. Number two is looking at the original vaccine studies. Now, I was shocked back in December, January, there were some doctors who I'd spoken to and actually some doctors I still speak to who haven't even read the initial vaccine studies. And if doctors aren't doing that, what hope is there for the general population? I hope that all doctors or anyone in medicine will read the actual studies. These are all openly available. Now, I went over the original Pfizer study, which was published in the New England Journal in this video here. I crunched over the numbers. And when you go over the numbers, a relatively low number of people in each arm of the trial had COVID-19, whether they were in the placebo or the vaccinated group. And the absolute risk reduction was actually quite small as well. When we looked at the study population, the median age was only 52 years old and only 21%, one in five, had one or more comorbidities. So it is a relatively healthy population. And my concern is that for a vaccine to work at anywhere near 100%, you have to have people with strong functioning immune systems. And in the elderly and vulnerable, sadly, that is not the case a lot of the time. Their immune systems are not as strong as, say, in a child who has a very strong, robust immune system. And number three, the human body is immensely complex, more complex than we could ever imagine. And the immune response varies highly by individual. This is something we seem to have forgotten as well. And we all know this in medicine or science, but there can never be a one size fits all approach or expectation here with regards to anybody's immune response. Two different people will respond very differently, whether it's to a vaccine or even a virus itself. And thinking about it logically here, the only possible way that we can tell whether anybody has mounted an immune response to a vaccine is to devise a blood test which looks at antibodies or some other component of the immune response. Hopefully that would be a highly accurate and sensitive test. But the problem is, is a test like that feasible in every single person? Probably not. We're assuming that everybody is mounting some sort of immune response to the vaccine and hoping that there will be enough collective immune responses to make a difference. So those are three reasons then why I believe it will be very difficult for there to be no breakthrough cases of COVID-19 after vaccination. And we must still continue to urge, especially those vulnerable groups, to be careful. For instance, it was Freedom Day today in the United Kingdom in England. They lifted all restrictions. And I personally have advised lots of my relatives and friends who are in those at-risk groups to still be a little bit careful. It's wise to do so. I don't lose as much sleep over my completely healthy 20 and 30 year old relatives or friends. But again, it's always going to be a risk assessment. And in the end, it's going to come down to personal choices that we all have to make. I have advised my close family and friends who are in these at-risk groups that even though all restrictions are lifted, you may want to be cautious for the next few weeks when you're in a shop. You may still want to wear a mask. Do I think that masks are 100% effective? No, but you could at least continue to try to be cautious and a bit sensible here in how you proceed. You may want to continue using hand sanitizer, avoid being in extremely crowded places. Even if you are vaccinated, that is only sensible. Life is precious. But again, those completely healthy children and young adults who are trying to go about their lives. We saw a lot of pictures today of them wanting to go out to, to parties. Okay, these things are going to happen. That is what young people will want to do. But I lose less sleep over them than I would the elderly and the vulnerable, who I do advise should still be a little bit cautious even as complete restrictions are lifted. And let's say hypothetically here, even if 100% of the population was vaccinated right from newborn up until ripe old age, that wouldn't mean that the virus would magically disappear. It wouldn't alter the fundamental logic of what I've just talked about and is the reason why you would still get breakthrough cases. We can only do our best here. Do I personally want the vaccine to be 100% effective for this to be the end of COVID-19? 
absolutely, hell yes, I'd love it if we could get back to our old way of living. But do I really think that as a doctor and someone who thinks scientifically and logically or tries to anyway? No, I do not. And I do believe in always being honest with my patients and telling the truth and presenting data honestly and transparently. For the reasons that I've listed, it will be very difficult for any vaccine to be 100% effective against COVID-19. But I wasn't one of these people who was posting memes back in December, January online about this being the end of the pandemic, because I don't believe that that will be the case. Do I think that the vaccine is a very important part of our armory against COVID-19? Yes, I do, but I do also believe that the medical community should be focusing on other things. One of which being that I feel very strongly about is any individual's immune or metabolic health, which we are in control of and we should be focusing on more as well. So let me know what you think down below, what your thoughts and comments are. Thanks for listening, Dr. Sunil Dan. Follow me on YouTube and Facebook, MedStoic Lifestyle Medicine. We'll speak again very soon. Mm -hmm.